This is a product expiry date tracker which I have created in Excel. Before creating the new format, let's see how it works. On the left hand side, we have got all the item details like item code, item name, UOM means unit of measurement, manufacture date and expiry date. Based on manufacture and expiry date, we will calculate shelf life in months and shelf life in days. And after that, we will have days pending in expiry and status. Shelf life in months, shelf life in days, days pending in expiry and status will be fully formulated. On daily basis, days pending in expiry will keep on changing and accordingly highlights will get changed. Also the status will keep on changing on daily basis. In case any product will be expired, it will be automatically highlighted as well as it will be mentioned as the product is expired. I have kept some criteria for the highlights when we come to right hand side. Over here we have got the criteria. More than 30 days, it will be highlighted in green. Between 4 to 30 days, it will be automatically highlighted in yellow. Between 1 to 3 days, it will be automatically highlighted in light red color. And when the product will be expired, it will be automatically highlighted in dark red color. As well as the word expired will be mentioned. Let's start creating a new format now. This is my example file. I'll insert a new sheet. This will be expiry tracker. We'll click on A1. We'll take column A closer. We'll click on B3. Serial number, item code, items or products. I'll take as items name. UOM means unit of measurement. I'll select row number 3 and we'll align all the things in center. We'll select the whole sheet and we'll align all the things in mid. We'll click just under serial number. 1, 2. We'll select both and we'll drag this till 10. Item code. I'll take some random code over here. We'll drag it down. We'll select the whole sheet and we'll change the font style. We'll do as Times New Roman. Item name. I'll take some random names over here. We'll drag it down. UOM means unit of measurement. Like pieces, numbers, boxes or cartons. So I'll take as numbers, boxes, cartons. We'll drag it down. Same for boxes and cartons. We'll click just after UOM. We'll increase the column size. This will be manufacture date, expiry date. We'll select the whole sheet. We'll go to home tab. We'll come in the center. In the center, we get the option of wrap text. I'll click on wrap text. We'll click just after expiry date. This will be shelf life. We'll press alt and we'll hit enter. In bracket, I'll take months. We'll drag this down. I'll remove months from here and we'll put days. We'll click on serial number. We'll press shift control, down arrow key, right arrow key and we'll create borders. We'll come to right hand side. This will be days pending. We'll press alt and we'll hit enter. In bracket I'll take in expiry. And this will be status. We'll create borders over here also. We'll come to left hand side. We'll click on serial number. We'll press shift control right arrow key. And we'll change the cell color. We'll change the font color. I'll take manufacture date and expiry date from my example file. So we have got manufacture and expiry date over here. There's no formula. These are just normal dates. Spelling of manufacture is wrong. Perfect. We'll come to right hand side. Shelf life in months. Formula will be plus or equal to expiry date minus manufacture date. And I'll hit enter. So we have got 180. So these are days. We will convert days in months. We'll double click on the formula. We'll take this in bracket. We'll come to the end. Divided by 30. Enter. And we got months. What will happen if I delete manufacture date from here? We got some random figures. I'll undo this. We'll come to shelf life in months. We'll double click on the formula. We'll come in the very beginning. And we'll insert the criteria of if. If. Bracket open. Manufacture date is equal to blank. If manufacture date will be blank, in return I want blank. In Excel, we use double inverted commas for blank. So I'll put comma 
double inverted comma once again, comma, will come to the end, will close the bracket and will hit enter. And we got shelf life in months. I'll drag this down. We'll remove decimals. I'll do one thing. I'll come to left. We'll keep my items till number 8. We'll come to right hand side. We'll click on top. We'll go to formula bar. And we'll copy my formula. Control C or Command C. We'll press escape. We'll come to shelf life in days. We'll go to formula bar. And we'll paste my formula. Control V or Command V. And we'll hit enter. We'll align this in center. So over here also we got shelf life in months. But we want days over here. I'll double click on the formula. We'll come in the end. And we'll delete 30 from here. And we'll hit enter. Now we got shelf life in days. We'll drag this down. Days pending in expiry. The formula will be plus or equal to expiry date minus today. Bracket open. Bracket close. And I'll hit enter. We'll align this in center. We got the numbers in date format. I'll press Ctrl 1. We'll go to general. We'll come down and we'll click on OK. Now we got days pending in expiry. We'll drag this down. Over here, we haven't got any details. But then also we can see the random figure. So to avoid this, we will insert the criteria of if. We'll click on top figure or number. We'll double click on the formula. We'll come in the very beginning. And we'll insert the criteria of if. If bracket open, we'll click on shelf life in days is equal to blank. For blank, I'll put double inverted comma twice, comma, double inverted comma once again. So, in case shelf life in days will be blank, in return I want blank. So, I'll put comma, we'll come to the end, we'll close the bracket and we'll hit enter. Now, I'll drag this down. Status, formula will be plus or equal to if bracket open, we'll click on days pending in expiry is smaller than 0 means if days pending in expiry will be less than 0 we want the result as expired so i'll put comma double inverted comma expired double inverted comma close comma in case this criteria is not going to meet in return i want blank so i'll put double inverted comma twice bracket close and i'll hit enter we can't see anything over here i'll drag this down and just notice, two products are expired. I'll double click on the formula. Over here, I have taken less than zero. So why I haven't taken less than or equal to zero? In case it's zero, means if any product is getting expired today, it means it's not expired yet. It will be expired tomorrow. We'll hit enter. Now we will highlight our cells. So the criteria of highlighting cells, I'll take from my example file. So my criteria are more than 30 days green. I'll select days pending in expiry from top to bottom. We'll go to home tab. We'll come to right hand side. In right hand side, we get the option of conditional formatting. We'll click on conditional formatting. Highlight cell rule greater than. And over here, I'll put 30. We'll click on drop down and we'll select green fill with dark green text. And we'll do OK. So the shelf life of none of the products are more than 30 days. If I change date from here, enter, just notice. After 44 days, one product is getting expired and the cell got highlighted in green. But if we notice over here, over here we haven't got any details. Then also our cell is highlighted. I'll select from top to bottom. We'll go to conditional formatting. Highlight cell rule equal to and over here I'll put double inverted comma twice. We'll click on drop down, customize format, fill. From here I'll select white color and we'll select font color as white. And we'll do OK. OK. We can't see any changes over here. We'll go to conditional formatting once again. Manage rules. And this is the rule what we have inserted right now. We'll click on the rule and the rule will be highlighted in green. I'll come down and we'll click on edit rule. We had inserted double inverted comma twice, but conditional formatting inserted extra double inverted commas. So I'll delete the rest of the double inverted commas 
and we'll keep just two and we'll click on OK. OK and just notice from here green highlight got vanished. We'll select days pending in expiry from top to bottom. We'll go to conditional formatting. Highlight cell rule and from here I'll select between. We'll take this to left. Our second criteria is between 4 to 30 days. Over here we have selected between. So we can see two entry boxes and over here we have to provide a range. So starting range will be 4 days and end range will be 30. We'll click on drop down and we'll select yellow fill with dark yellow text and we'll do OK. And all the days between 4 to 30 got highlighted in yellow. Now we will highlight between 1 and 3 days. Let's do this 0 to 3 days. Enter. And let's do this less than 0. Enter. We'll select this once again from top to bottom. We'll go to conditional formatting. Highlight cell rule. Between. And this time I'll take 0 as start range and 3 as end range. We want the color as light red. By default, we can see the color. So we will click on OK. Nothing got changed. Let's change some figure from here. And just notice, when there is 0, it got highlighted in light red color. I'll change one figure from here also. And just notice, when the figures are between 0 to 3 days, it got highlighted in light red color. One more criteria is pending and that is dark red. We will come to left. We'll click on first item code and we'll select till bottom. We'll select till end. We'll go to conditional formatting. This time we will go to new rule. From here we will select classic. In case you are using windows, you'll not be getting the option of classic. You'll be diverted to next step and that is use a formula to determine which cells to format. And the formula will be, I'll take this to right plus or equal to, I'll click on status. When I click on first cell, by default, dollars got inserted. One dollar in the beginning and one dollar in the center. Over here, our target is to highlight the whole row. So we will delete dollar from the center. Is equal to double inverted comma expired. Double inverted comma close. We'll click on drop down, customize format. We'll go to fill. From here, we will select red color. We'll go to font and we'll change the font color as white. And we'll do OK. OK. And just notice, when the products are expired, the whole row got highlighted. We'll go to View tab and we'll remove the grid lines. We'll come to left. We'll click on B2 and we'll select till end. We'll go to Home tab and we'll merge the cells. We'll come to right. We'll increase size of column J. We'll adjust the row size. We'll come to left. We'll increase the size of row number 2. We'll put some color over here and we'll change the font color. We'll create borders. We'll change the font style. We'll do as Arial Black. We'll increase the font size. This will be Dates Expiry Tracker. And our format is ready now. In case you want to add more columns, you can. In case you want to add your stock, it can be done. In case you want to mention the price of the stock, it can be easily done. Just click over here means just click anywhere where you want to insert extra columns. Right click the mouse, insert. Perfect. And the work is done. I'm sure you must have loved the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon with a new topic. Till then. Bye-bye.